uh, I think this is lesson number four. Okay. So, uh, what is it? Okay. Look at the back of your handout. Okay. It says here, are we wise or foolish sons? Uh, now, which do you think? Which group do you belong? Okay. Are we wise or foolish sons? And uh, uh, let's have the Friday school. This will probably take us 35 or even 40 minutes. But I want you to participate. Again, this is Friday school. This is not preaching time. Uh, this is a time when you can uh, when you can voice out your opinion. What do you think? Okay. And uh, uh, I'm sure that Brother Chester will do that. He will get you involved today. And so let us uh, welcome Brother Chester as he comes and uh, guide us through our lesson today. Brother Mike. Amen. Good morning, church. Good morning. Seems that you're not yet awake. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, so today uh, we'll be learning from uh, our, uh, in our Friday school. If you have your Bibles with you, I encourage you to open your Bibles on Proverbs chapter 10. Our lesson is found in your program. I think it's in the back of your program. You'll find the key verse. Our key verse is Proverbs chapter 10, verse 5. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 5. Are you there? Wait, I'm not in there. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 5. It says here, are you there? I'll read it. It says, He that gathereth in summer is a wise son, but he that sleepeth in harvest is a son that causeth shame. Okay, so I encourage, uh, before we start, I encourage that we should pray first. Let's pray. Our Father God in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for this wonderful morning once again that you have given to us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for uh, giving us another Friday, Lord, where we can worship you and learn, Lord, from your words. Lord, I pray, Lord, that as we uh, continue on with our lesson for today, I pray, Lord, that we once again, uh, uh, your Holy Spirit guide us, Lord. I pray, Lord, that may you help us set aside whatever things, Lord, that may distract us, Lord, from learning from your word. And I pray also, Lord, for the brethren who are still on the way. I pray, Lord, that may you help them arrive here safe and sound, Lord. Lord, I pray and ask for your wisdom and your uh, help me, Lord, to be bold in speaking your word, Lord, and help us, Lord, to understand what you want us to know today, Lord, and that we might be blessed from your word. Lord, we thank you and we praise you in all of these things we ask in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. So if you have your programs with you, it's found in the back, and the title is, uh, Are We Wise or Foolish Sons? Amen? Amen. When we think of, uh, when we say wise, what comes into your mind first? Anyone? Again, this is Friday school, as Pastor has said. Uh, this is Friday school. Amen? So we are allowed to uh, ask, ask, and we are also allowed to give our opinion. So when we say wise or foolish, what comes into our mind first? Wise. Word wise. Anyone? Wise. <laughs> but... doesn't know anything. Okay. Uh, that's a good one. Someone who, uh, again, what is wise? Again, you said? Ah, smart. Okay. okay. I thought someone who is mad. <laughs> okay, someone who is smart. Okay, that's a good one. And foolish is someone who doesn't know anything. Okay. So here, if we look at our lesson, it's, uh, it's a really encouraging. Amen? And it's also at the same time a warning to those who are serving the Lord. It says in your notes, here's an encouragement and a warning for those of us who are serving God. If you look at these words carefully, you will notice that they emphasize four truths. So, uh, the, uh, the, the lesson is, uh, is likening the harvest time 
during summer days. Amen? It says in the verse, He who gathers crops in summer is a wise son, but he who sleeps during harvest is a disgraceful son. So, who among you here experience uh, farming? Just simply raise your hand. Farming. So, if you... Not Farmville, huh? <laughs> in Farmville. <laughs> farming, then. You really experience tilling the ground and planting the seed and watch it grow or nourish it. Okay, so if you experience farming, you uh, might as well uh, know what, we, what the Bible is, or you can relate easily to what the Bible is talking about. Like for example, in uh, the city where I grew up, in Baguio, uh, we do not plant uh, rice grains there because uh, in Baguio it's always rainy. So most of the time, the plants that we plant over there are the plants which uh, grew, uh, grows up in a short span of time. Like for example, one of our products is strawberry. Strawberry grows in a uh, small amount of time, maybe let's say one or two months. Because uh, in Baguio, it always rains. So if we will try to ply, uh, plant grains, rice grains, maybe the rice grain will drown. So in Baguio, uh, I got the experience of uh, watching our neighbor because they wake up early in the morning around four, 3 to 4 a.m. They are already outside. They are watering the plant. So it's, it's important to water the plant uh, for the leaves to be cleansed because uh, in our place, uh, what do you call this, the, the smog, when it uh, descends on the plant, it will destroy the leaves. And it also will destroy the, the, the strawberry or the, the plant itself. So it's very important for them to really take care of the plant. And uh, in the, in the, during the harvest time, they have to be very quick. They have to be very quick. Because uh, most of the time, they do not harvest the, the, the plant immediately. It only takes days. For it to be uh, for it to be transported to the next market okay so anyway going back to the lesson the days which in which we live are are in your in your notes there's a blank there it says the days where we live are are in summer days amen they are summer days they are harvest days the days in which we live are our summer days. They are harvest days. This means that they are days of opportunity for in-gathering. Amen? Amen? Or to put it in disp uh, dispensationally, this is the day of grace. So what do we mean when we say the day of grace? It says here, it began at the day of the Pentecost. It began at Pentecost and will go on until the Lord comes. So what is the day of grace? What does the day of grace mean? Does anyone have an idea? The day of grace. Not sister grace. Huh? This is the day of grace which uh, is, is found in the Bible. Anyone? Day of grace. It says here, uh, the period of time in which men and women are invited to be saved are in, and are in fact day by day being saved. In Acts chapter 2 verse 47, let's open that uh, very quickly. Acts chapter 2 verse 47. It says, In praising God and having favor with all the people, and the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Amen? Amen. Uh, so, to clarify or to help us understand what the day of grace means, uh, we will try to dig deep or break it down into three. It's found actually in your notes also. It is, uh, there are three points there in which, in which uh, we will understand what the day of grace means. So number one in your notes, or letter A, sorry, I should say, is in relation to God. In relation to John, John chapter 6 verse 37. John chapter 6, verse 37. It says, are you there? 
says here, All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. Amen. 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 So aren't we thankful that the Lord did something for us? Amen. For us to be saved, right? Amen. So John chapter 6, 37. The second one is 2 Peter chapter 3. 2 Peter chapter 3. Verse 9. Amen. Uh, the Lord is not slack. Amen. Concerning His promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to us, word, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Amen. So, in this part, it's uh, in relation to God. This is what God did for us. Amen. He did something for us. In, the, in, the, in letter B, it is in relation to the church. In relation to the church. Uh, what are the verses there that's found there? Can somebody please read? Matthew chapter 28, verse 19. We'll try to do this uh, very quick. Matthew chapter 28, 28, 19. It says here, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen? So, this is now uh, where we come in. Amen? Amen? Salvation is not made up by man. Amen. So, letter A is in relation to God. This is what God did for, in order for us to obtain salvation. He gave it to us. Now, here in number two, it's now in, relate, in relation to church, to the church. And that is... Uh, where we come in when we say church uh, it's the body of believers amen? amen okay so another verse in Acts chapter 15 Acts chapter 15 verses uh, 13 Acts ch uh, chapter 15 verse 13 and after they had held their peace James answered saying men and brethren hearken unto me Verse 14, Simeon had declared how God at the first did visit the Gentiles to take out, uh, to take out of them a people for his name. Amen? Amen? So isn't it a joy for us to know that uh, God did not limit the extent of salvation? Amen? Amen? He did not just limit the salvation towards the Jews or the, or in the Israelites. He also gave salvation freely to all men. Amen. Even Gentiles, amen? amen. So, uh, so that is uh, in relation to, uh, to the church. And uh, letter C, in relation to men and women. Amen. Uh, look at uh, Isaiah chapter 55. We just read the verses and we'll try to. Uh, Isaiah chapter 55, verses 6 to 7. It says here. Verse 6, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Amen. Amen. Call ye upon him while, we, uh, while he is near. Verse 7, Let the wicked forsake his way and the, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him. And to our God for he will abundantly pardon. So if we will look at this uh, three points in your notes. First is what? In relation to? God. Second one, in relation to the? The church. Who, are the, uh, who is the church? Us. Body of believers. Amen? And, and the third one is in relation to men and women. Who are these men and women? These are the lost sinners. Amen? Okay? So, the summer days, the summer days, our opportunity in the ministry of the gospel. It is an opportunity for God to save. Amen? That's why we are in the summer days. Do you imagine a, a harvest? Do you imagine a harvest? I don't know, but in the Philippines, you can uh, see the rice grains. Even when you travel from Baguio to Manila, when you pass by through the expressway, you can see the, uh, the rice grains. You will uh, easily, uh, you can easily tell if the, the rice grain is ready for harvest because it changes in color, right? So, 
if you will imagine and will put it in a spiritual perspective what the Bible is talking about when it talks about harvest it means it is ready it is really ready everything is ready we just simply have to work for it amen so uh, opportunity for God to save for the church to evangelize so what are the things uh, what are the things that we could do or what are the things that are uh, in evangelizing what do you think anyone when we say evangelize what uh, what comes into your, our minds first there are so many things that we can do in evangelizing amen anyone like for example in BBC what are we doing here in BBC in order to evangelize Go to the labor camps or Bible studies. What else? What else? Inviting visitors. Amen. Witnessing to them when they get here. And witnessing to them, especially when they get here. So that is also in relation to men and women. They are the ones who are lost. So we are uh, we are to invite them also. Amen. What else? Ano pa kaya yung pwede nating pwede po pong nating gawin para makapag-evangelize what else? anyone? From among our African brothers seems that you are sleeping <laughs> yes brad spread the message yes spread the message what is that message? it's the gospel amen? We do not spread any other messages. Amen? <laughs> okay, so we are to spread the message. A good one, but Anyone? Anyone else? But In the back. Amen. Winning souls for our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? That's why we go out Bible studies. That's why we invite visitors. Because we want to win souls for Christ. Amen? Okay. Anyone else? Sending missionaries. Sending missionaries also. Sending missionaries. Who among here, uh, I don't know, whom the Lord uh, will use here in the BBC as a missionary someday? Maybe the newly wedded couple. I don't know. <laughs> Amen? Jesus. Sister Mark. Amen. Also, uh, yes, visiting also the, the sick ones or the, the ones in the hospital or the hospital ministry. Amen? Even sick people need salvation. Amen? Amen. Especially because uh, we do not know. Amen? <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, so here are the things that maybe we can do or uh, we can do in order to evangelize. First is uh, we will uh, infiltrate or infiltrating. Right? That's why we mentioned a while ago we have to go through the Bible, Bible studies or the labor camps. And... Uh, uh, share the gospel or share the word as our brother said so infiltrating next one is interceding what do we do what can we do for example the, the missionaries what can we do for our missionaries we have to pray for them amen we might not be able to go but we can also pray for them amen investing so number one is infiltrating second one is interceding or, or praying for them number three is investing what do we invest? What are the things that we, can, uh, that we can invest in order to evangelize? Isn't it that we do what? We do giving. Amen? And that's why we give to our tithes and offerings in order to support the ministries of the church. Amen? Amen? That's why we also give to the missions in order to support the missionaries all over the world. Amen. That's right? So... Uh, so what's the, one, the first one? Infiltrating, interceding or praying, investing, and number four, encouraging. We can also encourage. Amen? Anybody in this room or in this uh, building can uh, is able to encourage someone. Amen? Just by merely uh, reading a verse or sharing a verse through a text message or calling someone to attend. Amen? Amen. So we are able to encourage. So these are summer uh, summer days of opportunity in the ministry of the gospel. Amen. 
uh, opportunity for God to save, for the church to evangelize, and for the lost souls to be saved. Okay, so number one is the days in which we live are our summer days, and they are... Now, on the second point, second point, Number two is those whom the Lord uses are uh, as His harvesters. So the plant there is, has, uh, is harvesters. In the summer days of opportunity are His sons. The, those whom the Lord uses as His harvesters in the summer days of opportunity are His sons. Of course, this is uh, this is very basic. Amen. You will not. Uh, if you are, for example, you have a company, you will not. Uh, send someone who is not under employment your, in, into your company. Amen? Yeah. So the same is true in uh, the biblical perspective that whom the Lord uses uh, especially to do the harvesting are His sons. And when we, when are we called sons of God? When are we called sons of God? Look at your Bible in John chapter 1. John chapter 1, very quickly. John chapter 1 verse 12. John chapter 1, verse 12, 12 to 13. Uh, but as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the, what? Sons. Sons of God. Amen? Even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Amen? Amen. So the ones who are called the sons of God are His children. When we say children, those who accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. Amen? So if anyone here is not, has not yet come to the knowledge of the gospel or of the knowledge of salvation, it is very important. Amen? Kasi sayang yung, ano natin, uh, yung, sayang yung labor natin. If we are trying to labor and to please God in harvesting and yet we ourselves are not yet sure of our salvation. Amen? Amen. So it's very right. important for us to understand that. Matthew 7, 22 and 23. Matthew chapter 7, 22. Matthew. Uh, Matthew chapter 7, verse 22. Many will say to me in that day, uh, Lord, Lord, these are the ones who are serving, uh, who, who are not yet uh, the sons of God. I mean, verse 22 in Matthew chapter 7 many will say to me in that day Lord Lord have we not prophesied in thy name they were preaching they were sharing uh, the Bible okay they were prophesied in thy name and in thy name have cast out devils see and in thy name done many wonderful works in verse 23, uh, take note of this, verse 23. And then will I profess unto them, this is Jesus Christ now speaking, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. So, if we look at this, it's really important for us to be first called the Son of God, or to be called as a Son of God, amen? Before we do our service for the Lord, amen? So, it's very important. Uh, I think that is one of the main reasons why, uh, because one uh, one time when I was having my lunch during uh, during lunch time, uh, I don't know. I'm not sure if that was Tuesday. There was one person who came to me, who came to my table, and then he talked to me about the Bible. He's very good in, uh, regarding about the, with regards to the Bible, the Old Testament until the, the, until Revelations. But when we came to the understanding of the salvation. He does not proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord. And so that's why we have to be very also we have we also have to be very careful about this. Amen? Okay, so the son uh, the quality uh, qualification for service is sonship. The Lord says, Son, go and work today in the vineyard. So if we look at this, uh, there is a if we will try to break down this verse, it says here. Uh, son, so there are three. Uh, uh, there are four questions here. If we will try to look at this one, uh, who is God calling? Who is God calling? It says son, right? Go and work. Where will we go? Where do you think we will go? Will we go? 
we will have to go and work, right? Amen? Yeah. And then, when? When do we have to uh, go and work? When do we work? I mean, Bible says today. So, uh, today or maybe next week? Or maybe next month? I don't know. And where? Where is uh, where's the place where we will work? It says here the harvest. Amen? Right? So, we're, it's talking about the harvest. So, uh, the vineyard is uh, the place where we will work. So, as it says in the word and the verse that we read a while ago in Proverbs chapter 10, that these are the days of, uh, these are summer days, and uh, this is the time of harvest. So we are in the vineyard right now. Amen. Amen. So we are called laborers. Amen. Uh, we are not sons of God by nature, except uh, that God is our Creator. We only become sons of uh, sons by spiritual birth, as we have read a while ago in John chapter one verse twelve. The doctrine, uh, that's why I, I said a while ago that we have to be very, very careful. Amen? Amen? Anyone, any doctrine that doesn't proclaim Jesus Christ as uh, Lord and Savior is, uh, is a call. Amen? 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 Amen. Right. Amen? Amen? So it should be, we have to understand this one because there are a lot of uh, teachers uh, around uh, this world right now who are very very smart in within terms to the Bible but when you come to the knowledge of salvation it's not the Lord Jesus Christ right. Amen. it's either man or good works so we have to be very keen uh, many are seeking to do the work of harvesting who are not sons because they have never been born again and adopted into God's family so this is very sad amen it's very sad that uh, some of uh, people uh, some of those people are working without uh, having the assurance of salvation themselves. Okay? So what is number one again? The days in which we live are, are summer days. Uh, they are harvest days. Those whom the Lord uses as His servants in the summer of, uh, summer days of opportunity are His sons. And third one is, God has two kinds of sons. Those who are wise and those who are foolish. So those who are wise and those who are foolish. This is uh, this is easy to understand. Amen? If we will only abide to the word of God, we will have a better understanding with regards to who the wise children are and who, are, who the uh, foolish children are. If we'll go back to the key verse, in our key verse, it says wise and foolish. Uh, this, uh, it pertains about Christians who are obedient and disobedient. Right? This is very important to see that some of his sons are disobedient. In the New Testament language, they are worldly and not spiritual. Amen? Amen. So, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 1. I have to, I have to uh, hurry. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 1 to 4. Okay, are you there? It says here, And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as, even as unto babes in Christ. Verse 2, I have fed you with milk and not with meat, for, he, for hitherto ye were not able to bear it, neither yet now are ye able. Verse 3, For ye are yet carnal, for whereas there is among you envying, strife, and divisions, and ye are not carnal and walk as men. For while one said, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos, are ye not carnal? So, if we look at this verse, for some reasons, why children are not able to perform or to be called as harvesters is, we are not walking in accordance to what the Word of God says. Amen? We are still living in, in, a, a, in a carnal life or in the... Uh, what you call this worldly desires, amen. So it's uh, that's why Paul uh, mentioned here that I have fed you with milk and not with meat. For hitherto you were not able to bear it, neither yet now are ye able. For ye are yet carnal. For whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions, and ye are not carnal and walk as men. So uh, if we are walking in the course of this world, it's really hard for us to be called as harvesters, amen. amen. Because there are a lot of things that holds us back. Uh, I do not 
remember exactly where that verse is found, but it says that the sin that easily, that, that so easily beset us. Amen? Hebrews chapter 11. Chapter 12. Okay? So, uh, it says here, uh, having been born of the family, but are not following on to know Him. They are not growing in grace. Amen? It's very hard to grow in grace if we are walking in uh, in the in the carnal life or in the world in the world amen? amen this is not i'm not only saying this to, uh, towards you this also applies to me especially amen okay so in this verse before us the wise and the foolish sons are contrasted described the wise sons are those who gather the harvest in the summertime and the foolish sons are those who sleep who are lazy and apathetic all this should lead us to ask in relation to the great matter of winning souls, are we wise or foolish? Amen? Amen. Are we wise or foolish? Okay. So number one, in your notes is the days when we live uh, in our wise and those who are foolish. Uh, sorry. Uh, summer days and uh, harvest days. Those whom the Lord uses as His harvesters in the summer days of opportunity are His sons. That is number two. Number three, God has two kinds of son, those who are wise and those who are foolish. So number four, to be asleep in summer days of harvest is to cause shame. Amen? Amen. To be wise sons brings joy to ourselves. Amen? There is joy in serving Jesus. Amen? Amen. And now in eternity, uh, but above all things, uh, above all things, there are... Uh, by the way, there are some Bible verses there in your notes. We will not read it for the sake of time. But uh, I encourage you to read it after uh, after the service. Amen? Uh, but above all things, uh, it brings honor to the Lord. But to be asleep is to be foolish because this brings shame. So number one, it brings shame upon the name of the Lord. Number two, upon the cause of Christ. And number three, upon our selves. So it is uh, really the Lord who is uh, being put to shame if we are not doing our job. Amen? Proverbs 24. Uh, we will read this. Proverbs 24, verse 30 to 34. Proverbs 24, verses 30 to 34. I went by, in the, by, by the field of the slothful, and by the vineyard of the man void of understanding. Verse 31, And lo, it was all grown over with thorns, and nettles had covered the face thereof, and the stone wall thereof was broken down. Then I saw and considered it well. I looked upon it and received instruction. Yet a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands, of the hands to sleep. So shall thy poverty come as one that traveleth, and thy one as an armed man. Amen. So this is a good verse. Uh, this is a good reminder for us. Amen. Okay. If we are sons of God, having been born into the family through faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, our salvation is secure. Amen. Amen. We are saved. We are secure. Amen. We have a place in heaven. Amen. But how sad... It how sad it will be to suffer loss at the judgment seat of Christ. So what is the judgment seat of Christ? Look up uh, Romans chapter 14. Romans chapter 14. Romans 14 verse 10. It says here, But why dost thou judge thy brother? Or why dost thou set at not thy brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Amen. 12 so then every one of us shall give account of himself to God so we are all in this room if we have the Lord Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior and we are not doing anything for the cause of Christ we are we are to answer also we are we are we will really be put to shame amen, amen. okay so in conclusion uh, there's a verse there in Jan Daniel chapter 12 uh, Daniel chapter 12 verse 3 lastly this is the last verse that we will be reading Daniel chapter 12 Daniel chapter 12. Can anyone read Daniel chapter 12 verse 3? 
And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. Amen. Uh, which gives us an inspired commentary on the theme of this study. So, Proverbs 11.30. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 30. It says here, The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he that winneth uh, win souls is wise. Amen. Yes. So, uh, we'll see here that if we are really doing our job and we really want to win souls for Christ, we are called wise. Amen. Yes. We are not called foolish. Foolish ones are, again, as in the lesson, are the ones who are not doing anything uh, for the Lord. So, if you have any questions, so that's the end of our uh, Friday school. If you have any questions, Pastor John is here to answer them. <laughs> Okay, thank you so much, Brother Chester. That's uh, very well taught. Amen. 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 Uh, we are thankful for Brother Chester for teaching us the lesson. Uh, he added a lot of things that are not found in our handout, but he also did not discuss uh, a lot of things that is in the handout, which which is good. That was the uh, that was done on purpose, so that we will not rely. Okay, uh, we will do a study. There are so many things here that if you will only take this material and use it. For example, look at, uh, let's, let's go to the blanks. So, we will make sure that all the blanks are filled. The days in which we live, that is today, these days, are what? Summer days. They are harvest days. They are summer days and they are harvest days. Uh, in the content of point number one, it is a day of grace. And when we define day of grace, we dissected that by dividing it into three. One is God's part, okay, His invitation. We do not buy the doctrine. Meron kasing doctrine na yung mga, lalong lalo yung mga Calvinist, that God has chosen some people to be saved and some people not to be saved. If God chose you to be saved, you will be saved. If God didn't choose you to be saved, uh, not to be saved, sorry. Okay? Uh, that's the doctrine of Satan. Right. That doctrine is leading a lot of people to, uh, to hell. A lot of souls to hell. Jesus clearly said, Him that cometh to me, I will in no wise what? Cast out. Cast out. John 3.16 is very clear. Whosoever believeth in him. Second uh, Peter chapter 3 verse 9. God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should what? Come to repentance. Okay, so uh, God did his part already. He is extending an invitation to everybody. So that is God's part. Now, let us see, we will jump to let us see, in relation to lost sinners, the responsibility is to, to get saved, to receive the Lord. But our responsibility as a church is to evangelize. Our responsibility as a church is to spread the good news, to preach the message of salvation. Amen. Amen? Amen. That's our responsibility as a church. Okay? Corporately, we are the church. Brother Chester said, the body of believers. Uh, we have been thinking that when we talk about church, the Roman Catholic Church, the building. It's not the building. Okay? We are the church. Amen. Ekaleo, uh, the body, the group of believers called out assembly we are the church and uh, the church is made up of individual believers so in this in, in this respect individually we have a responsibility because you are a part of the church amen amen, amen? amen. you are a part of the church so in order for the church to uh, fulfill uh, its function every christian in the church must fulfill their obligations and brother Chester uh, gave us some insights that are not included in our notes regarding uh, evangelism. Everything we do as an other church should be geared towards evangelism. Many time service, why? Because of evangelism. It's either we encourage you to win souls or um, it is always geared towards soul winning. So number two, those whom the Lord uses as his, what's the blank? Give me the word. As his harvesters, his laborers, in the summer days, 
or opportunity are his what? sons. Can you also serve God even if you are not a child of God? Yes or no? The, the honest truth is you can. Okay? Like they did in Matthew chapter 7. Uh, they did that. But is it acceptable? No. Okay? So, okay, a child of God. Okay? In Galatians uh, chapter 3, verse number 26 applies. And uh, let's go to point number 3. God has two kinds of sons. Uh, well, those who are wise and those who are Foolish. The Bible says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So, dito pa lang nagsisimula. Somebody defined wisdom as somebody who has a lot of brain. Okay? That's a, that's a very good opinion. Okay? A man's opinion. But as far as God is concerned, even if you have a big brain, it doesn't equate, it doesn't mean that you're wise. Right. Because the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Okay? You think of people in the world who are very smart, college professors, but they teach and they believe that man has come from monkeys. Okay? Uh, no, the Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So, um, and uh, the Bible also says that he that winneth souls is wise. Uh, knowledge is something that you earn, something that you get uh, from schools. Wisdom is something that is God given. Amen. So it's either you are wise or you are foolish. Okay? Dalawa lang yan. It's either you are an obedient child of God or disobedient. I have said this before. Our problem is not knowing the word of God enough. That's not our problem. Most of us here, we know enough of the word of God. Of course, we need to abound in the word, but we know enough of the word of God. Our problem is obedience of what we already know in the word of God. Amen? Amen. Marami tayo alam sa Bible. Just a very direct na example. Forgiving, for example. Do you, do you know or do you not know what God says about forgiveness? Hmm? Is that something we are not familiar with? But it is something we struggle with, right? See, it's either you are an obedient child or a disobedient child. It is our own sinful nature, our carnal nature, that uh, uh, that that is bent towards uh, disobeying God. Even that Apostle Paul said that the things that I want to do, I find myself not doing. And the things that I hate doing, those are the things that I do. And he is a spiritual giant, but he also has the uh, all sinful nature in him. And number four, to be asleep in these summer days. Kapag uh, busy tayo sa pag-ha-harvest at ikaw ay patulog-tulog lang, huh, ano sabi nito? To be asleep in the summer days of harvest is to cause what? Is to cause what? Shame. Di ba nakakaya na uh, yung ibang mga Christians ay talagang they are doing everything they can to harvest? Because, you know, the harvest is... Uh, is talagang they are white and they are very ready to, for harvest and then yung iba natutulog lang. Okay. Uh, nakagaya po yun. Nakagaya sa, uh, sa ating Panginoon. Nakagaya sa ibang mga mga ng palataya. And of course, it is also, it also brings shame to ourselves. And you can read the verse in 1 John chapter 2 verse number 28. Where the Bible says, My little children abide in Him that means He stay busy. That when He shall appear, we shall have confidence. And not be ashamed before him at his coming. Thank you so much. Faith, are you playing one song? Play us one song or not before we start with our singing today.